My name is Sasha Ivanovsky and I'm the Dean of the School of Dentistry and Professor of Periodontology at the University of Queensland. I wanted to be involved in this project because I'm passionate about periodontal health and was motivated to increase the awareness about this very important health condition among both dental practitioners and patients. I am Emeritus Professor at the University of Paris Cité and a long-standing teacher and researcher in the uh, area of uh, periodontology. There is increasingly robust evidence linking oral disease to systemic health conditions. We know there is an established association with cardiovascular disease and a bidirectional relationship with diabetes. As new research emerges strengthening these associations, it is increasingly clear that there is a common risk factor approach of tackling non-communicable chronic inflammatory diseases in collaboration with other health organizations. The link between uh, periodontitis and other diseases is now well established. For instance, this relationship is bidirectional with diabetes. And also we know that there is an independent association between cardiovascular diseases and periodontitis. But we do not know right now if it's a causal relationship. The dentist must uh, monitor their patient on a periodontal standpoint on a regular basis because periodontal diseases are easy to prevent, especially gingivitis, because periodontitis is also more difficult to treat. So uh, preventing gingivitis, you prevent periodontitis. Dental practitioners must regularly monitor the periodontal condition of their patients because periodontal disease is usually not painful. Therefore, patients may not be aware that they're developing periodontitis or that their periodontal disease is getting worse. So unless the periodontal condition is regularly reviewed, it may not be identified and treated until it is too late. New 2017 periodontal classification is important because it represents a significant update to the understanding and diagnosis of periodontal diseases. It provides a more comprehensive and accurate framework for classifying periodontal conditions based on scientific evidence and clinical presentations. This classification system takes into account the complexity of individual cases and emphasizes the importance of personalized care. It establishes a common language and criteria for clinicians and researchers, promoting consistency in diagnosis and treatment approaches. This new classification is a significant update of uh, the knowledge in periodontology. And the major advantage is that we have a common language between researchers and also clinicians. The new classification was needed in order to incorporate contemporary understanding of periodontal disease. It is important because firstly, the new classification defines gingival and periodontal health and also recognizes the category of gingival health on a reduced periodontium, representing successfully treated periodontitis, but at the same time also acknowledging the increased risk for recurrence in such patients. Secondly, it expanded the scope beyond traditional periodontal diseases to include peri-implant diseases and conditions. It recognizes the increased prevalence of dental implants and the need to address their unique challenges. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the classification introduced a multidimensional approach to diagnose periodontitis, considering various clinical and radiographic parameters, as well as patient-related factors. It emphasized the importance of a comprehensive assessment taking into account factors such as disease severity, extent, complexity and risk factors. When using this uh, new classification, uh, the oral uh, health uh, professional must take into account uh, various parameters, but maybe one of the most important is uh, the uh, detailed uh, clinical examination 
plus uh, the risk factors that are so important in this new classification. It is crucial to gather a comprehensive patient history, including systemic conditions, lifestyle factors and oral hygiene practices. Additionally, ident identifying and evaluating specific risk factors such as smoking or diabetes helps in determining disease progression and treatment plan. A detailed clinical and radiographic examination is essential for determining the severity and extent of periodontal disease. This includes assessing parameters such as probing depths, clinical attachment levels, bleeding on probing, vacation involvement and tooth mobility. Regular follow-up appointments allow for monitoring disease progression, evaluating treatment outcome and making necessary adjustments to the treatment plan. Maintaining long-term oral health requires ongoing surveillance and preventative measures. The staging and grading process represents a consensus among international experts in the field of periodontology. But adhering to this standardised approach, dental professionals not only utilise an approach that is based on the latest evidence base, but also contribute to a standardised global collaboration, research and knowledge exchange, fostering advancement in periodontal care worldwide. Oral health professionals should use stage and grade in the classification because this is a standardization of the diagnosis that has been set by a collection of experts and this is a consensus among them.